That has to be my favorite sound. That means the crane is coming to raise our new rig and we are ready. We've got our cutter pin spread and our overnighted non-stock part from Harkin for our furling gear. Straight from Harkin's archives. <laughs> our new wire shrouds are cut and wrapped to the mast and you're gonna be right there with us as Philip and I put on our first high mod together, unsupervised. You ready? Comes the crane! Our first job, once the mast was in place but still supported by the crane, was to connect the forestay via the furling drum, followed by the backstay, then we could start to put our first high mod on the upper starboard shroud. And you'll get a kick out of this, watch as Philip and I tried to cut our first shroud with a hacksaw while the crane is still waiting and on the clock. <laughs> Brandon took one look at us and said, let me get you a real tool. Once we had both upper shrouds secured, it was time to send Annie up the mast to install the wind instruments. Once that was complete, we could finally let the crane go, but that only began the long process of hammering in wedges and shims both at the entry point at the mast collar and the mast step below to make sure the mast was truly snug and tight. After that, it was selfie time. <laughs> Video Annie was a little too excited about having the stick back up in the air. Of course, that wasn't the end of all the fun, though. It never is. Um, 
Crazy. Of course, right when we get the mass out, huge storms coming. Tons of wind. Tornado warnings. The minute it gets in the air. Story about it. Get live. Trying to snug everything up and do the best we can. Huh. Our mass got a 20 knot wind test right out of the gate, but thankfully she held fast. Stickles right. And we're starving. Thank God the neighbor dropped off some ham for us so we could eat. Thank you, Miss Lee. <laughs> we're so hungry. That's not a bitch we've been grinding dust all over. Mike, I know. That's good. Sure. Got some good eats here. Aside from the charity lunch, there was one benefit to having put our stick up right before a big rain. Check it out. I'm going to show you guys. We have, well, we're going to have floorboards. <laughs> got the mask back in, and she looks great. Of course, we got a torrential downpour yesterday, right after we put the mast up, a huge storm came in. Um, so we didn't really have time to seal the mast as best as we could, you know, with the boot and all the rescue tape. So we were just kind of taping crap up there to, you know, get it good enough, you know, to not have just, you know, torrential downpour down here. But so we did get some water, um, of course, from the storm, and we set that out so that the bilge is mostly still dry. It's looking good. Got our scent box here that's working, capturing everything from the anchor chain for sure. Nothing is coming from the anchor chain at all. So that's great. But I wanted to show you. Of course, he starts to vacuum right when I'm trying to record. Say what? I want to show you guys the um, shims that Philip did really good. Getting the mast all centered up in here. We had to thin some out and really make make it all custom. As you can see, that mast up is dry as a friggin' bone. And this is important because, as you recall, it was water that was sitting in our mast step due to a clogged mast weep hole that led to our rotten stringers, which led to our whole process of hauling out and going to the shipyard in the first place. There is no water in there now, and we've got her draining. If she ever does get water, right there, so. There will be no more water in the mast. Absolutely not. Niagara, take two. That's right, our boat is gonna be stronger than new. The last step for our new wire rigging was for Philip and I to return the next day and cut and install the high mods on the aft and four lower shrouds, this time unsupervised. One of the things that was frightening to me about this project was cutting the shroud. If you cut it too short, there was no going back. But we braved it anyway and cut each shroud with a metal grinder at a distance we felt gave us enough playroom with the turnbuckle threads. The next step was to use a metal file to separate the cable strands to isolate the center core of strands. Philip would then help me hammer on the inner shell, which I called the bullet, as well as the ring that had slots for each individual strand, which began the tedious process of fitting the strands back into each slot. Once that was complete, we then screwed on the high mod attachment that threaded into the turnbuckle. Once it was screwed into the turnbuckle, the shroud was then securely connected to the deck, and we used the turnbuckle to tighten. Occasionally, this process had to be repeated if we cut the shroud too long and had too much thread down in the turnbuckle, but it was better than the alternative. He's kind of tight right now, but he's barreled in. Yeah, he's barreled yeah. in. So he's got too much, too much barreling going on there. We don't have enough adjustment space. We need to cut him back maybe an inch, two, uh, two, two inches. inches. He's got an inch on each side at least. He probably has to go down enough to get a cocker pin in. I forgot about that. Philip was telling me, reminding me there's one in each barrel. But our job still did not end there. Once the shrouds were sufficiently tight, it was then our job to decide if the mast was sufficiently straight. I'll let you try. Ultra strong. I'm gonna go check to see if our rig is centered. Probably need to get on the ground, but I'll let you decide, go for it. Pretty good. Yet, pretty hard to tell, right? 
Brandon had the great idea to use a halyard. We used the Jenny halyard, which runs from the top of the mast, pulled down to either side of the boat. That way we could make sure it was the same distance from starboard as it was to port. It was about the same. I ran the money. Brandon also had some great advice for how we could properly tune the rigging once we had the boat under sail. And then when you take the boat out, you put it under load. You, you put it under load to one side and look and see if it's if the top's bending or if it's pulling. Yeah. And then you adjust yeah. from there. So if the top's pulling over, then you know you need tension you, on the you other side. You need to tension the upper. Yeah. If the middle's moving, then you need to tension the lowers. Gotcha. And vice versa. And then you go back and forth. So you get you it. You tack right. back and forth until each tack it stays. Stay yeah. straight. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. As always, we're thankful to Brandon for all the good tips. After that, it was only one thing left to do. That's right. Crack open a drink and congratulate ourselves on a job well done. The new wire rig was up, and in video time, we'd be splashing in just a few days. I got me a margarita waiting at home. And if you think I look happy, think again. Philip bore the brunt of that project. I cannot tell you how glad he was to finally have the rigging done. Back in the water on Tuesday. How many days is that? Oh, Friday. All that Sunday, rigging Sunday. is up. Like, you know how many hours I spent thinking about that shit? <laughs> All that rigging is up there now. Liking these videos? Awesome! Be sure to subscribe on YouTube, sign up at havewindwilltravel.com to read about our Atlantic crossing, and consider becoming a patron for exclusive patrons-only videos and footage, free access to my Atlantic crossing movie once completed, and a chance to win our second giveaway, a six-day bare boat charter course. Get inspired and get on board. Looks like you're bending it. You're He's blaming me. Uh-huh. Y'all hear that? It's on record. I wasn't holding it right. Okay. Look like a heck job dentist here. Yeah, I can have it Oh, it just rolled on the deck, thankfully. <laughs> it was funny. Cut me up. Is this entertaining? It's up there now. Hey, it looks like one of them's backwards. Why don't you get up there and turn it around? I think that furlough's on backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to give a shout out to Rick at Harkin. Yeah, definitely. For saving our asses 10 times over. That's right. <laughs>